Well, hello there. Today we are visiting an old battlefield where we have been before um, in the nice and good year of 406, if you remember that. It was uh, then labeled as the Battle of Akragas, uh, which is the Greek name of this same city uh, that has the label Agrigentum, which is the Latin version of that same city. And uh, the year is now 262. Uh, BC and we are seeing Romans and Carthaginians uh, in a real big battle for the first time in, in history, at least from what we know. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a big, big thing actually because this is the first time the Romans are doing a major campaign outside of uh, mainland Italy. So this is a, a pivotal point in history so to speak, because um, they have only been, you know, well, I don't know if, it, if you could say local affairs, but I mean, there have been some really big campaigns, you know, uh, in, in Italy before, but this is still something different because now they are leaving their uh, home territory, so to speak, of mainland Italy to venture off to foreign lands, if you will. Uh, and at this point, uh, Sicily was dominated by Carthago and also uh, Greek city-states, with Syracuse being the most powerful one. And speaking of Syracuse, what, what led up to this battle actually was that, uh, well, some years back before this uh, battle, uh, there were some uh, people, I think they were kind of mercenaries called the Mamertines, who did occupy the city of Messina on the northeastern part of Sicily. And uh, uh, King Hero II of, uh, of Syracuse, well, he didn't see that as a good thing, uh, of course. So <clears throat> he gathered a force and went up there to, to battle them, or at least besieged uh, Messina with the Mamertines in it. Uh, and the Mamertines saw that, okay, we don't have a chance to beat uh, the Syracusans, so they actually plead for help uh, from both the Romans and the Carthaginians, actually. And what happened was that uh, the Carthaginians did uh, respond to this plea for help and sent a force to Mes uh, Messina. And that, in turn, had the effect that uh, the Syracusans, well, they didn't want to risk a a big conflict with Syracuse at this time, so they backed off and went uh, home to Syracuse again with their army. But on the other hand, uh, of course, there was also, an, I mean, a, a wider political uh, reason for Carthaginians to do this. First of all, they had a goal to be the masters of Sicily, so if they could get control of Messina eventually, that would be a good. Uh, a good point from launching attacks against the Greeks and also of course they could launch attacks against uh, uh, mainland Italy eventually uh, so they were really happy about that but the Romans of course was thinking exactly the opposite that was not a good thing having a lot of Carthaginians in Messina so um, after some time actually they declared war on on uh, on Carthago and uh, actually sent there some consul, consular army, so this is a big thing for, for the Romans. And uh, yeah, and, and we see here we have actually two consuls here in this battle, Megillus and Vitulus. Anyway, um, in the southern parts of Sicily we have this city, you know, Agrigentum. So the consuls wanted a battle with uh, with uh, Hannibal Gisco, who was the big leader in, in Sicily for the Carthaginians. But Hannibal, he, when, when the Romans uh, approached, he actually went into Agrigentum, taking some people with him from the vicinity there. So the city was really crowded at this point, and he basically refused to come out and battle the Romans. Uh, probably he didn't feel he had the force to do that, so he thought he could hold out in, in the city. So the Romans, uh, well, 
of course sensing that uh, Hannibal was weak in there, they started to besiege the, uh, the city of Agrigentum. And, uh, well, there were some raiding parties happening and uh, s stuff like that. And eventually, the thing was that for Hannibal, these raiding raid, raids he did, he also lo lost some men always in those raids because there were some skirmishes and, and uh, minor... Uh, well, not battles, but you know, there was some fighting going on. So he, he lost some men there all the time and he couldn't really afford that. So at some point he, um, he wasn't, mo I mean, he wasn't that eager anymore to do these raids anymore. So he, he basically sat there inside the walls trying to uh, uh, hold out. But the Romans, well, they had these uh, nice fields of Sicily to uh, get fodder to their animals and to the, to the soldiers. So uh, it was not a big deal for them. They could just sit there and wait out the, uh, the starvation of uh, Agrigentum and Hannibal. So, of course, when the months went by, Situ the situation became more and more critical for uh, Hannibal inside of Agrigentum. So at some point he did manage to get a word to Carthago uh, because he wanted to get some help. He, they needed uh, to send a relief, relief army there to um, help him out. So, and that Carthago did. So they did send uh, this man, Hanno the Elder, I think I read somewhere that he could actually be the son of Hannibal Gisco, but I'm not really sure about that. Anyway, he was the leader of this uh, relief party, and um, there are some different sources, as usual, on how big this force was, but uh, if you just look at the, what, uh, what has been noted here in the scenario notes, we go with that. Uh, they did dispatch a relief army of uh, 30,000 foot, uh, four and a half thousand uh, horse and 60 elephants. So this is a big, big thing. Um, so they uh, came to uh, Sicily safe and sound and they did um, march, they, ca they came from the from west. So they marched eastwards towards Agrigentum on the island and took more and more cities that the, also the Romans were in control of some supply cities and so forth. So this became a bit critical for the Romans as well. They did send some uh, cavalry to meet them uh, and see, you know, scouting. Uh, but uh, at one point, the uh, Carthaginians actually had some, you know, they, they, they brought with them some Numidian light cavalry and they got this uh, mission to try to draw in the Roman cavalry uh, well, they should harass them and then retreat and try to lure them into into a bigger battle uh, close to the Carthaginian main force, and that they did actually. They succeeded in that. So the Romans uh, had a pretty bad um, battle there with their cavalry, lost many men. <clears throat> so um, this was not good for Romans. All these events, and eventually, of course, Hanno reached the Roman army. So now he was kind of besieging this besieging army of the Romans. So and none of the part really dared to attack the other or, you know, came to agreement of a battle. So they pretty much stared at each other there for a long time, actually. So now the Romans suddenly were out of uh, supply and uh, the situation became critical for them. And Hanno was happy with that because he could now just sit and wait, uh, wait out for the Romans to starve. But the problem was, of course, Agrigentum. So Hannibal inside, getting more and more desperate, trying to to get the word to Hanno, saying, "Please attack the Romans. We are starving here. We are dying here in in uh, large numbers. So we need we need to get those Romans out of here." So. Hanno, basically against his will, he had to agree uh, to do a battle with the Romans. And the Romans, I guess, were quite happy with that eventually. So, 
So this is uh, the first really pitched battle between the Carthaginians and the Romans. They, they more or less uh, agreed on this battle. So they meeting here on this plain outside of Agrigentum. And actually, at some point during this battle, also Hannibal did an uh, effort to try to break out from the city with a force. But the Romans had uh, some substantial units, you know, still controlling uh, the Agrigentum itself. So. They were not successful and had to return inside the city again, this uh, uh, sallying force. So, here we see the battle lines uh, set up and um, it said that the, well, the Romans fielded pretty much in a usual way, as also depicted in how they are placed the troops here, you know, Velites, then we have the legionaries in the center or in the middle row, so to speak, and then we have Triarii in the here and some cavalry on the flanks. Uh, the Carthaginians uh, supposedly put their troops in two main lines. They had a lot of mercenaries in this battle. Uh, so we are seeing those guys here in the first line, and then we have more of the Africans. Uh, um, uh, in, in the second line, and we have elephants in between, and flanked by some cavalry here. So, the Romans started the attack, they clashed with the mercenaries, and they were, supposedly they were a really, really hard fight going on here, but eventually uh, the mercenary line of the Carthaginians started to bulge, and the Romans succeeded in a breakthrough. So they came through the first line, and the routing uh, mercenaries of the Carthaginians really caused uh, uh, this organization here in the lines. The elephants panicked and started to run through their own lines, and that eventually ended with the Africans also routing. They they did some uh, they did rally at some point, uh, as it said, and managed to hold off the Romans enough to the, for the main army to actually get away. So, it was a Roman victory, but not that a great one that they were hoping for. And uh, so, but Hanno's army was retreating, the Romans were following, but during the next night, uh, Hannibal inside Agrigentum was able to sneak out with his uh, main part of his army and also get away and later when the pursue of the Carthaginians were over the Romans returned and took Agrigentum they imprisoned all the people there and sold them as slaves and looted the city more or less so uh, but the the big thing is that they failed with beating the Carthaginians uh, uh, here so they were actually uh, Megellus and Vitellus here, they, they were actually denied a triumph uh, in Rome because of this, uh, because of the Carthaginians getaway. And also, during the siege and the battle, the Romans lost so, so many, I mean, tens of thousands of, of, of soldiers in this uh, uh, dragging on fight and, and siege. So, it was really not a big success for them. But, the main thing was that Agrigentum was now in Roman hands, and that was good for the the future, I guess. So that's basically what we have here in the uh, in the battle, what we're going to play now. So let's uh, also check out the War Council. So we will have a five command cards for both sides. And uh, <coughs> we are seeing the Carthaginians moving first. We'll fight till we get uh, seven banners. And there's no real special rules here. So this is cool. It's uh, no terrain, no special rules. Same amount of cards for both sides, so this is a uh, good, fair fight here, we're gonna see. And uh, yeah, as usually, let's take a look at the, at the game board and uh, set up forces here. So, if we start with the Romans, we have this big, big line of uh, legionaries here. So I think it's, uh, I think it's eight of them actually, eight legionary units uh, representing the Hastati and Principes here, so that's really big. Then we have three uh, Velites up front. We have also three units of uh, Triaria in the back, 
and with the with the console here. So this is Vitalus and uh, this is Megalus. And of course, flanking we have some uh, equities or, or horsemen. So we have here we have a medium heavy and here we have a he medium heavy cavalry unit. Pretty solid, nice uh, Roman line here. So over here we have. Um, the Carthaginians and as you can see we had the two main lines with the elephants in between and the first line would be these uh, uh, mercenaries so if we start here we have some slingers that would be uh, Balearic slingers uh, I think then we have two units of warriors and I think um, these are Gauls and also some Ligurians then we have a heavy infantry in the center and this is actually Greek mercenaries. Um, so this is a heavy, more as a phalanx formation here. Then we have some auxiliaries, and I think those are, um, you know, folks from from um, Spain and so forth. So maybe some Sicilians as well. I'm not sure, but at least people from Spain uh, or Iberia. And then we have also some Cretan archers here. Um, the second line would be most of the African uh, units. So we have some uh, Numidian javeliners here. We have three units of the auxilia representing Libyans. And then we have more of those javelin throwers over there. And of course these 60 elephants in two different units. On the flank we have light cavalry there. That would also be the Numidians because as it, as it were written, there, there was some Numidian cavalry doing this uh, initial cavalry action that I talked about, uh, luring in those uh, Roman cavalry into the main lines and got beaten. So I guess those are back here in the battle. And over there we have a medium heavy cavalry, and I bet those guys are Greek uh, cavalry here. So, kind of, well, in, in the count of units we are pretty even. Uh, but somehow I see the Romans as a more stable line. Most of these are these medium heavy infantry and that's pretty good. Here we have uh, much more, you know, uh, different style of units, very much auxiliaries. Actually no medium heavy infantry, but we have these two warrior units. So as long as they fight in full strength, they are okay. Uh, and we have, of course have this anchor here, the, the Greek phalanx. That could be really, really hard to beat. But um, I had the sense that the Romans are a bit stronger here. But not on the skirmish side though. We have uh, the slingers and the bow units there. So um, if they could get some good skirmishing in here, they could weaken the Romans before the main clash. And that could be valuable. So how should we play this uh, battle? What tactics should we use? Well. For the Romans, um, I don't see any other option than go in and get our hands dirty and, and start the fighting. We want to get those legionaries in and, and fight, and by that we should win. We, we're gonna lose some units, but we most of all should win in the end. Um, it, it's gonna be a, a tight one, I'm pretty sure of that, but if we just get our forces in quickly and start the uh, the main battle with the infantry, uh, we should be able to win this. Um, and just protect the flanks with the, with the cavalry. I mean, none of the cavalry flanks on either side are stronger than the other, really. So, we can only, you know, try to hold off enemy cavalry if they do anything and, and keep our flanks safe. That's basically So, I don't see a big I don't see a big cavalry action happening here because the other thing is that we will go to seven banners to win this battle so it cannot be decided by a cavalry fight as in some other earlier battles we have done but this uh, especially in the successor battles if you remember many of the battles were big cavalry flank fights and some in the middle and then it was over here okay if we lose the cavalry it still needs to go down to the caval or the infantry to to win so we will see an infantry battle. We there's no other option, right? So, uh, so by that I think we could give 
go a bit easy with the cavalry here. Same for the Carthaginians, uh, if we start with the cavalry, just hold the flanks, we don't have the force to attack. Only if we can get some, you know, cavalry charge card or something that we get that extra die, or maybe buy, you know, I am Spartacus or something like that. We can do an, an cavalry charge to try to scare off the enemy cavalry. Um, but for the infantry clash, well, the secret weapon could be those elephants, of course, uh, because if you just are going to fight mano a mano here with our infantry, I think the Romans will win. But if we can, at the right moment, release those elephants into the legionary lines, then we could be victorious. And also if we could get in some good first attacks here, for instance, with a... Uh, with those warriors, they have it's a really bonus with them to you know move two hexes and still attack. So that's that could be cool. So just try to have some even numbers with the with the Romans in the battles using the <coughs> Greeks and the warriors, and then at the right moment release those elephants into the lines that could win the battle for Hanno. So by that, let's just uh, start it, and it's the uh, Carthaginians who start. I, I could actually, if I just meant to mention that al also, that we could move up maybe a bit here with the Carthaginians. Uh, but otherwise, I'm more interested in just sit and wait for the Romans to come. And then we can launch our uh, warriors and maybe elephants when they reach our lines. Uh, and in the meantime, we should skirmish them. But we won't like to have those velites in upon us because then uh, they can weaken us and it's we don't want them to weaken our warriors and, and so forth so let's see but um, uh, yeah so I will probably just wait here for the Romans to come but the Carthaginians will move first so let's start there okay so it's the Carthaginians who start the game so we're gonna reveal the cards in slots A and B So it's a two unit center and three unit center. Um, and then we see what we're gonna play. So it's an A, B or C. So we're gonna reveal the card C as well. So, okay, it's a heavy troops and we have exactly one that's those Greeks. No, we also, also have those uh, elephants. So these could be handy uh, later on, that's for sure. But otherwise it's the center that we can activate and um, as I said I think I'm gonna sit here and wait for the Romans to approach so I don't want to start moving forward with any troops in the center line but I think I want to do another thing so I will play uh, two units center and I will activate these two um, Numidian javelin throwers and what I want to do is actually to move them two hexes to the flank. Um, I try to get up some, as many skirmish as I can. Uh, when the Romans approach, we can throw our javelins against them, try to weaken them before they hit us. And uh, yeah, that would be a nice thing. Also, um, the Roman line is a bit more extended than our first line here. So if we move our light infantry, we are more matching their line, even if it's only light infantry, but anyway, we have at least something to match uh, the flanks here, so they cannot envelop us that easy. Uh, so I think that's a nice uh, move, and uh, I mean, next time we can get those guys more up front. Another nice thing is that now we are anchoring our um, bow units and um, that slinger unit, so they are also actually um, supported right now. So. And it's good to get rid of this card early because it's only two units, so we, uh, it's nice to uh, get rid of that card early because we want to activate many units here when the, when the things getting are getting hot. Anyway, it's the Romans. Uh, we start with re revealing the A and B here. So it's order, four units left, or darken the sky. So this could be something for our Velites to use um, hopefully at some point. 
So we got this one, uh, lower order count or uh, C or the or, uh, lowest order count. And I think we could uh, flip up the card in, in C then, yeah. Okay. So basically, it's either of these two or that one, <clears throat> because that's the lowest order count. So we're going to play four on the left now. So the order goes out to left. That's pretty interesting. Um, so why not trying to... Um, yeah, what should we do, actually? Well, I think I'm going to at least order that Velite there. Then we have three more, but we have four units, and then thinking, what do I want to do? Um, should we start moving up our flank? But keeping the line, of course. Yeah, let's do that then. So we're gonna... Starting to move up these guys. I will lead the cavalry, but I will move up the triarii here in the back at least. So, these guys... Uh, moves there and these start moving over here we're keeping the line by moving up the tree area here and now these guys actually they have moved so they will throw a one die javelin attack and who should we target I think we take just that warrior unit in front of us hoping to I uh, get the blue one here. No, it's a green, so we missed them. Like that, we have a new card in place, so it's a Carthaginians again. It's an A or B. We're gonna reveal the slot A. We have the three unit center already up. And here we have an outflanked, all right. Um, so, how should we counter these? I think we're gonna play an outflank now. Yeah, I think so. Let's do that. So it's two on each flank. Now we're gonna fire with those guys. And let's move up our javelin throwers. They are good in harassing here. So they have moved. Over here, okay, I moved already, but I'm gonna do these a bit separate. Um, Let's move up these guys as well, and together with these, they cannot attack. So we have three possible attacks to do. Let's start on this flank. We're gonna fire with our bows against that uh, Velite there. Oops, that went over the edge. Oh. Okay, that's a flag, but the Velite unit is... Uh, Supported, so he just ignores that. And over here, fire with the uh, slingers first. It's two dice because those guys did not move against that bold Velite unit there. And we hit them with one. And then comes the second attack, some javelins following the stones. And that's a flag, so we force those guys back. And they will just rush back where they came from. Okay, so good skirmish from the Carthaginians in the beginning here. Forcing those back with casualties, actually. So, the Romans. A or B. And we have the Dark in the Sky, which is not valid. And then we have the first strike. So this one, oh, this is strange. Um, because this is basically not uh, any good option. But, you know, I'm thinking of if I should put this card aside, the first strike. Uh, because this, this is kind of a glitch now in, the, in this system, you could say. Because the dark in the sky make no sense. I have no units in in uh, in range for doing a range attack and the first strike is you know it's, it's a kind of a uh, bad thing here uh, how should I resolve this one well of course
course I could just play the dark in the sky and nothing will happen. I think I need to do that actually. Because this is a card in the, in the Roman player's hand. So this is kind of a wasted thing, but I have to do it. So I play the dark in the sky and ranged weapons may fire twice, but none in his uh, range of the Carthaginians. So I basically just discard that one and it's the Carthaginians. And they have A or B. So it's a three center, which we have since the beginning, and then we have another two in the center. Okay, so lots of things happening in the center again. Um, let's see. Maybe move up some auxiliaries here. Or maybe we should move up some warriors now to do the attack later on. I mean, we could hit the flank here with the warriors next turn if we get the card for it. Mm. Now, I think I go a nice and easy. So it's two units center. And then just order these two. I move them forward, so I have a more skirmishes in, in one big line when the Romans approach. New card. And then we have the Romans. It's a CD or E. So let's see, when the Clash of Shields is already up, then we have a counterattack, which would be two in the center, and then we have a line command, and that's that's more like it. So line come on. Now, at last, we can start moving up our big line of troops. I mean, this is what we have been waiting for. Right, all these guys. And yeah, let's play the card. Let's see. Let's start moving in that direction. And the Velites, well, thing is, if I move there, I could actually fire. Let's do that instead. We move those guys there. These guys need to form a line up there. These guys move forward. These Velites will move up here. Followed by the legionaries, putting them into support. Let's keep that guy in the center. Um, let's put the second Velita unit there. Follow up with more legionaries. Something like that. So now we have three units who could fire or do ranged combat. Um, so we start here, it's one die against that unit. Miss. Then we have one die. Let's target that auxiliary there. That's a hit. Goody, goody. And the second one, same target. And that's a miss. Wow, the lines are closing in now. The lines are closing in now. This looks cool. We still have a nice line. We have left some cavalry behind us, so we don't have real good flank support here. So if those Numidians come and harass us, they could force back these guys. Uh, we also have some skirmishes over there, so it's a bit dangerous. So let's see what the Cardinian does. It's an A or B. So we have three units center or two units right, and I think this is uh, 
just what we talked about or we could also clash with our warriors but do I want to do that um, not really as these guys are supported no let's go easy so uh, I will play the two on the flank though I think other, other thing would be actually to throw a javelins against those guys or even attack them as they are not uh, they cannot evade you know hmm so we have two options either I play the flank and start harassing the legionaries on the very end of the Roman line or I play three in the center and start attacking here instead because those guys cannot evade so they are in a bad position there we can only reach them with the auxiliaries but anyway it could be nice I'll roll for it, you know. So one to three, we play the flank. Four to six, I play the center. It's a center. So I will now order three unit center. And that will actually be these two. And for the other center, I will actually activate Hanno himself because I want to attach now when the things start getting close to uh, conflict here, I'm gonna move him up to these uh, Greek mercenaries where he can boost this, the troops in the first line but these guys they will move up and do some attacks so we start here against that Velite it's three dice from the auxiliaries and that's two hits pretty good but those guys will actually hit back with two no hits though. The second auxiliary will attack the same unit, hoping to get them. And we did, you know, since auxiliary is hit with sword symbols. So this Felicia unit is eliminated. And we get the first Cataginian banner. Um, and these guys could also move in here, but I don't want to do that. Of course, if I do that, we could hinder those guys from moving up. Uh, but they could attack with me more. Ah, I'll stay here. I'll stay put. Okay. So let's play the Romans also. Now when things are getting hot, A or B. Uh, and I forgot about the first strike. Ah, man. Um, should I redo this? I'm thinking maybe I should redo this thing. Mm. Should we? Should we not? Um, Ah, I'll leave it. I, I forgot about it. Sorry, guys. But uh, at least maybe we can spare the first strike to some more important unit. Let's hope for that. Uh, this is uh, kind of a pain to remember all this. Uh, the first that you have this in your hand and, and that. But when you play solitaire, I mean. Uh, anyway, let's continue. So it's an A or B for the Romans. So it's the outflanked for them. Because I cannot play the first strike, obviously. Um, but the outflank could be nice because we will now retaliate and uh, let's bring up the cavalry from here and we're gonna throw some javelins on this flank I will bring in some legionaries for the fight now we're gonna do a revenge attack because of those velites um, the cavalry we move up here just to anchor the flank here um, these guys will now move in to get their hands dirty, so to speak. So, start with a javelin attack, though. It's two against those uh, Numidians. Nothing. 
let's hope that uh, these guys are more lucky. So let's start here. It's uh, four dice. Or maybe we should, yeah, let's start here instead because those guys are not supported. Of course, we start there. So four dice. And why are the Romans so unlucky all the time? I'm, that was the same case in the at least two previous battles, I believe, or something like that. They don't hit anything. So the Auxiliaries will actually now hit back with three dice. And they got in one hit. That was not nice. <laughs> okay, so that was a failed charge. Let's see if the other legionaries are more successful for dice. Well, a bit more. One hit. But not that great, to be honest. And that flag they will uh, ignore and now hit back with three. And they also got in a hit. So pretty much an exchange happening here between the legionaries and these uh, uh, Spanish, Spanish units there, or Hispanic units. So, yeah, that's it. And um, let's get a new card. I think I'll end the session here. Um, well, quite okay so far. I'm a bit annoyed by two things happening. First of all, these, uh, uh, the Romans had to just discard a card. Uh, I mean, of course, that could happen in, if you play it like the you know, normal rules and you don't have really a good card to play. Very rare to happen, but I think it could happen more often in this system, especially if you have the first strike up here. I'm, I'm thinking of maybe sh I should have a house rule to remove the first strike, you know, have it just beside and not use that as a, as a command card actually or your card hand it doesn't really make sense to have it here on the on this board but i'm not sure i need to uh, think about that and the other thing of course that i forgot to play this perhaps i mean it was only velite so there's a big chance they wouldn't play it anyway you know because i will roll a die to see if they play it or don't not so there's a big big fair chance that we haven't be able to play this card anyway with the Velites. So maybe not a big thing there. Anyway, if you return to what happened here really is that, um, well, we have seen actually the Carthaginians being a bit more aggressive. So they have gone hard, hard on the uh, skirmishing here, forcing back some Velites that moved forward, if you remember. Over here they have actually launched the some of the mercenaries here, the, uh, the Spaniards and in, a, in an attack. And so, and they managed to destroy a Velite unit, and they also have been fighting really good against some legionaries here. So, pretty good. And the Carthaginians are in a lead 1 to 0 thanks to that Velite unit they got. Uh, no cavalry action here. Cavalry only slowly following their infantry lines to, to keep them safe on the flanks. Uh, but next turn will be much more action. We already seeing things happening here and it's the Carthaginians who go next so let's see what they have up their sleeve okay so thank you for watching and uh, see you again bye bye